Welcome to Ruin a Bad Guy's Day radio podcast with fraud expert Skip Myers. This is your guide to fighting fraud and chargebacks. Learn the best fraud prevention solutions and strategies. How to enhance your fraud prevention team. And how to prosecute criminals. Now, here's your host, Skip Myers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ruin a Bad Guy's Day Radio. Hi, I'm Skip Myers, and I thought we'd start this week's podcast a little different than usual. Uh, you know, this time of year, it's, it's great to motivate and inspire folks, and I have a great opportunity to speak a lot of people at conferences and shows and at meetings uh, all over the place, and, and, and what really inspires me is to really inspire others and it really got me thinking a lot about going into the holidays and you know the power influence that all of you have to really impact others in a, in a great way and so the theme of this podcast is really to make an impact and inspire others to greatness and you know really how do you do that and a lot of you it's it's within you now it's just our ability or a decision to actually bring it out of ourselves to help others in the time of need and actually spend that time with others so that so that they can really you know see the impact of, of your leadership and, and the skills that you have to really make a difference not just at work but in per, in their personal lives and you know I get asked a lot of times in youth groups that I speak to uh, you know, Skip. Hey, I need your advice. You know, one day I want to be a CEO. I don't. I want to make a million dollars. You know, I want to. I want to run a great big company. I want to own a Ferrari. I want to have all these great things. And I always stop them. And something a little unconventional that I do. I ask that person. I said, Hey, let me see your cell phone. You have a cell phone, right? And they said, Sure. That's kind of weird. Why do you want to see my cell phone? Well, let me see your cell phone. And sure enough, they pull out their cell phone from their pocket, and guess what? It's the hottest and greatest new cell phone on the market. And the first thing I asked them, I said, you know, you know, when's the last time you spent that kind of money on yourself? You know, you're after the highest tech, the hottest new cell phone. You can't wait to get it. But when's the last time you really spent that sort of money and you invested in yourself? You have the hottest and greatest cell phone and I bet you you have the hottest and greatest technology on your computer you got the latest new gaming system and all the latest games but you know for yourself you're probably operating on the same operational system in yourself that's that's been around for 10 years when's the last time you upgraded yourself and you know if you really want to go to that next level it's time to upgrade yourself and a lot of these same folks you know I asked the same question too is, is you know, do, what do you value? Do you value success or sleep? You know, a lot of these folks don't even know what it means not to hit the snooze button. You know, when sleep is more important than being successful, when sleep is more important than helping others, you know, there's a problem there. When you decide that being successful and helping others is more impactful than hitting that snooze button, then you'll make a difference. You know, there's a great story of a uh, in a book written by a famous admiral right now, and he talks about in order to be successful, you know, you need to make your bed. And I think that's that's a great idea. But I think he stops uh, a little short there. I think before you make your bed, you need to get out of bed and quit hitting that snooze button. You need to find that why that we all talk about, about what gets your butt out of bed every morning and what you want to do. And to me, a lot of times, that's not just about fighting fraud, but what gets my butt out of bed every morning and excited about the day is, is serving others, impacting other people, helping them learn and become more knowledgeable about fighting fraud and ruin a bad guy's day. That's one of my many whys that I have. So really, you know, it's not just about getting a routine and being disciplined about making your bed every day, but you have to get out of bed to want to do that. And, and what inspires you? Have you thought about that? What inspires you today to get out of bed and do something different? And I hope during this time of year, it's something that you can do to make an impact in another person's life. And Again, so often those people who want to be successful, they don't do what successful people do. I'm telling you right now, successful people don't hit the snooze button. They're out of bed. They're out doing something. They're making an impact every single day. There's a plan for their future. And a lot of times that involves surrounding themselves with great minds and great people and making a, a positive influence 
on other people through encouragement and mentoring. You know, those things all play a great role into the success of what people have and do. And it's not all about finding the hottest and greatest new shiny car and the big house and all these toys that people try to surround themselves with. You know, at the end of the day, that doesn't mean anything when you're on your deathbed or at your funeral. All those cars you had, they're all rusted now. All those possessions you have have been passed away in inheritance or been given away. None of that matters. The one thing, the biggest thing that really matters is the impact you had on others. That's your, going to be your legacy. No one's going to remember about this, your success or the cars you drove. They're going to remember how you encouraged people, how you mentored them, how you influenced them, how you listened to their problems, how you gave your time away. You know, your time is the greatest commodity that we have. People understand that when you take the time to listen. When so many people don't, especially today, you probably walk down the hallway at your company and people walking by all the time. Hey, Skip, how you doing? Yeah, They don't really care. They just keep walking. If they really care, hey, Skip, how you doing? They would stop and pause and generally listen and take their own time to listen and care about what I had to say. You know, that's a big, that's a big thing with me is, you know, if someone asks me that, I'm going to take the time to actually listen. If I ask you how you're doing or, you know, how you've been, I'm going to stop. I generally care and I want to know. And, you know, what's interesting in this day and time, I reflect back on my former career in law enforcement and a lot of you in the military or former military law enforcement, public safety or fire departments, you know, we had a job where we sacrificed ourselves for the benefit of others. And I'll say that again. Uh, and public safety and, and, and in the military, we sacrifice ourselves for the benefit of others. And sometimes, especially in the military, that sacrifice is the ultimate sacrifice to benefit others. Where today in the doggy dog world and in business and a lot of cutthroat managers and things people do, it's really just the opposite. You know, people today uh, do things for their own benefit at the sacrifice of others. I mean, it's just all backwards. So one of the greatest things that we could do today, and people in, who are listening today are, are upstanding folks, people in the fraud business and former military and law enforcement, some of the, the best people on the planet, you know, really can make an impact on others and influence others in a great way. So, you know, it brings me to a great story. Uh, that I like to talk about all the uh, a time with some young folks is uh, the story uh, that's really going to encompass the theme of, of this podcast is the story about this young boy who is right at the ripe old age of about 16 looking for his first job. And he frequent this grocery store with his mom quite often. And he came home one day and his father asked him, you know, Johnny, hey, uh, you know, have you found that new job yet? Do you know what you want to do? And he says, yeah, sure, Dad, I think I want to get a job at the grocery store that mom and I go to all the time. There's some great people there, and, you know, i got a lot of friends there. I think that'd be a great place to work. And Dad says, hey, Johnny, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to be at the grocery store? And Johnny says, I want to be a bag boy. And Dad says, you want to be a bag boy? A bag boy? What do you mean, what do you mean want to be a bag boy? And well, Johnny says, well, I, I think I can make a difference. I think a bag boy would be, would be a great place to start, and I think that would be you know, something I really want to do. And I, I think I can have an impact there. And so dad was supportive and, and, and happy that Johnny had you know, a great idea about what he wanted to do. And so a couple of weeks working at the grocery store, bagging groceries, Johnny comes home to dad and says, hey, dad, I think I want to do something different. I want to, I want to really impact people. I, I talk to people every day and there's people that are having problems and you know, people that don't even talk to me. And I, I think I can have a different impact if I do something a little bit different. And he says, sure, what, what, what do you have in mind, Johnny? He goes, well, I want to have a word of the day. Dad says, what do you mean you want to have the word of the day? Well, I, I want to write down an inspirational note and, and stuff that note in each bag, you know, that I put groceries in. And, and when they go home, they'll read that inspiration note. Hopefully that's going to make a difference and, and impact them. And Dad said, hey, that's a great idea. What can I do? And Johnny says, well, I need your help making copies. Can you make me a bunch of copies? And I'll take them to the grocery store. So Dad said, sure. So they made tons of copies of the inspirational notes and words of the day that Johnny came up with. And several weeks go by. Johnny's putting in the notes of the day and words of the day in the grocery bags. 
And one day the manager of the store comes inside and gets with another manager and says, Hey, why are the customers in lane eight? <laughs> lane eight. I mean, they start looking, well, Johnny's the bag boy. The manager goes to the line and starts talking to some customers. There's one woman holding a loaf of bread. Hey, uh, why are you in this line? There's other lines wide open. And she said, well, I came to your grocery store today to get the message of the day from Johnny. But there's a lane over here that's 15 items or less. You just have a loaf of bread. I mean, we can get you in and out real quick. You didn't hear what I said. I, I came in to get the message of the day from Johnny. Every customer that that manager talked to in that same line wouldn't go to another line because they were there for one thing. That was to receive Johnny's word of the day. This is a true story. You know, Johnny didn't do anything that was innovative or technical. He just wanted to Im impact people's lives. It sounds corny, but, you know, that one thing, the one idea that a lot of people didn't think was a great idea, drove a ton of business to that grocery store. Heck, there were people driving down that busy road turning into that parking lot to go to the grocery store, not because they needed a, a, a gallon of milk or some orange juice or a loaf of bread. They went there to get the message of the day. He impacted people's lives. And I just wonder how often you reflect upon how you can impact people's lives in a similar fashion. Something simple, something that gets you out of bed every day that makes you want to do something to serve others. Because during this time of year, it, isn't it really about serving others and helping other people? Uh, so often we're so caught up in this business of fraud fighting, we're so worried about and thinking about the next bad guy. I mean, it, it can be uh, an occupation that can make you very cynical. But I, I tell you that through the 30 years in this business, I still rely on and trust the majority of people. People are good. And so I think while I'm still here, there's two things that I believe that are important. It's what you become in life and what you give back to life. And every day I'm thankful that I'm above ground and I'm able to give back to life a message that hopefully will impact other people. And today that brings me to a story that a lot of you have encouraged me, inspired me, not only to write a couple years ago, but actually to speak about on, on this podcast that, that really dovetails from the original story about making that impact. And, that, and this is a story that I wrote in tribute to my mother, someone that had more impact and more influence on most people that that I'll ever know and someone that you never heard of. And that's my mother. And so I'm led here today uh, to tell a story that I wrote about a few years ago. I'm here today because a lot of you inspired me to talk about this during this time of year. But this journey, this this story and, and the writing of the story, you know, came with a lot of new challenges and self-reflection because I'm considering the bigger picture that this story represents. You know, just prior to Mother's Day, a couple of years ago, I began writing that story in memory of my mom. And as I pro progressed through that composition of that story, I felt a familiar presence of a heavy heart as I reflected upon what she meant to me and the positive impact and the impact she had on others since her passing over 20 years ago. You know, as my emotions overcame me, I just could not muster up the words or courage to finish that story originally. Reflecting on that experience has made me realize I must go to where I'm led. And I'm led here today to talk about this story and hopefully encourage you to make an impact on others. So I'm called today to share this story that all began in my basement. Look, we all have heroes. We have mentors and people that have influenced us, encouraged us and motivated us to new heights. And some of my personal heroes include political figures like Winston Churchill, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, and Ronald Reagan. And some are sports heroes like Peyton Manning and Michael Jordan, Walter Payton, and Pat Tillman. My other heroes and mentors are mostly made up of people you don't even know. And one of them was named Gwen. Well, Gwen was my mother. You know, my journey began during an afternoon of spring cleaning at my home in my basement. It was late April, the week before Mother's Day, a few years ago, when I was surveying a treasure trove of stuff that I collected in my basement over the years. As I stood there in my basement, I wondered if I could, should consider cleaning the house and the whole basement before the honeydews started happening. And I think you know what I'm talking about. I started sorting through the various artifacts and old relics of years past when I encountered two tattered cardboard boxes 
that were curiously out of place. It had been about four years since I last laid eyes on those boxes. You see, I inherited those boxes after my father passed away over four years ago. I brought home the boxes and stored them away in my basement, never ever looking at them or the contents. You see, I believe to this day I was probably suppressing some emotions, knowing what I would find in those boxes. You see, the actual boxes themselves aren't important. It's what I found inside the boxes that inspired me to originally write this story and today speak about it. Oddly, I was drawn to those boxes for the first time in over four years. And my curiosity and anticipation to go into those boxes was childlike as I rummaged through each box. As I collected my thoughts and inspected each item, I realized that this stuff, this old stuff, had originally belonged to my mom. It looks like my, my dad must have collected some of my mom's personal belongings after she passed 20 years ago and placed in these into these boxes for safekeeping. You see, my mom passed away from stage 4 breast cancer just before Mother's Day in 1995. This was after a year-long battle that started just after Mother's Day in 1994. You see, it was Mother's Day in 1994 when my family and I were celebrating Mom's Day at my parents' house. My mom was always strong and rarely sick. But on that particular Mother's Day in 1994, she appeared very pale, fatigued, and very fragile. After a few weeks of doctor visits and tests, the doctors delivered the bad news about my mom's future. I would have never known the true impact of the news until I discovered the contents inside those old cardboard boxes. You see, the contents of each box contained nothing of any value. There were trinkets of old costume jewelry that belonged to my mom, some of her stuffed animals she had while she was at the hospital, old photographs of the family, miscellaneous personal belongings, and a red spiral notebook. At first, I looked at all the different belongings, and I didn't open up that little spiral notebook at first, and I just tossed it to the side as I continued to sit there and reflect upon my mom and my mom during that time in her life when she battled cancer. As I stared at that torn, faded, dog-eared notebook, I picked it up and began to thumb through those yellowing, discolored pages. This is when I noticed my mom's handwriting and contents written in that notebook. And to my astonishment, I realized that this little red notebook, that tattered, yellow-paged notebook, was actually my mom's cancer journal dated from June 1994. And as I read through that notebook, glued to every page, I realized it was almost exactly 20 years to the day that my mom passed away from cancer. Although that little tattered red notebook appeared very unremarkable, it was the contents of that notebook that resonated within me profoundly. I, I understood that my mom chronicled in this notebook a personal journey of her one-year battle with incurable cancer. It was difficult and sometimes emotional to, to read, I believe I can, I can remember it to this day, but I was glued to every page as I could feel my mom's presence there with me through her words in that journal. You see, mom's leadership and wisdom was incredible. You know, as I read, read about what my mom went through and how she overcame so many obstacles and bad news, I realized she was reaching out to me, knowing that someday I would read her journal. It was 20 years since my mom passed away, and she was still giving me advice and encouragement and strength and motivational words through that journal. See, mom's leadership and influence was, was never changing. It was constant. Mom was an integral part of a cancer patient group and would even give support and advice to other patients who had little hope or faith or recovery. Mom always said that your ability to influence others should never, ever be underestimated. You should always use your powers of influence to encourage others in the time of need. Influence them with personal experiences and stories and influence them with a positive, never quit attitude. You see, mom reflected in her journal that the time you have to positively impact others and influence their lives is limited by the time you have here on earth. So what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? It's time we all realize that what we say and do really matters to other people. You have the power to change people's lives, make an impact. Mom was leading and influencing others during a time when she was fighting for her life. 
I believe she understood that giving strength and leadership to others helped give her strength and faith in return. Although my mom positively impacted many people during her short life, she probably had more influence and more impact on other people's lives during the last year of her life, when she was fighting for her life. And mom's inspirational uh, message and confidence resonated among others to this day. I mean, her inspiration to succeed often came from her unrelenting confidence to overcome extreme obstacles and setbacks. Her journal details horrific, and I mean horrific, terrifying overnight visits to the hospital, hospital that involved heavy, heavy doses of chemotherapy that was pumped into her body to keep her cancer from spreading. In her journal, my mom writes that although the chemo was keeping her alive, she realized it was killing her too. Through all the pain and mental anguish of chemotherapy, mom wrote in her journal that the importance of keeping faith and having confidence so that others would not lose hope or faith either. My mom was inspired by the saying, when you allow your confidence to shine, you unconsciously permit others to do the same. I believe that mom was saying in her journal was that she needed to prepare portray strength and confidence for others, even though it was the hardest time of her life. Mom was convinced that her strength and confidence would be an inspiration to others, even in the face of extreme adversity. Mom understood that others would just give up, give in, and quit over the smallest problems or obstacles they encountered. She understood that her moment in time was limited and that the need to openly portray strength and confidence was more important than her personal feelings. Mom had incredible attitude and vision. I remember as if it was yesterday when I last hugged my mom. It was a sunny Monday Monday afternoon in May 1995 when my five-year-old son and I arrived at my mom's house for lunch. And mom was explaining to me the next phase of chemotherapy that was upcoming on Thursday. And this treatment would be one of those overnighters again at the hospital. Although mom... Although my mom knew she was up against uh, another terrible upcoming chemo treatment, she never lost her ability to keep her sense of humor and positive outlook on everything around her. I mean, she was always looking forward, looking into the future. She never wavered from planning for the future and setting great goals for herself. This positive mindset and commitment never wavered that day or any time during her entries into that journal. Not ever. As we concluded lunch that day in May 1995, we all hugged each other and said our goodbyes. The next day I left town on a business trip, and as I sat on the airplane, I reflected on what a wonderful time we had together and how strong she seemed to me, both mentally and physically. I had made myself some notes to call home in a couple days to check in just see how mom was doing after that chemotherapy on, on that upcoming Thursday. Unfortunately, I never saw mom again after that, having that wonderful lunch with her and my son. Two days later, after having lunch in the, in the middle of the night, I received an urgent phone call at my home to hotel. I was notified that my mom had just passed away. Her cause of death was related to unexpected complications from the advancement of her cancer and subsequent chemotherapy treatment. I never got the opportunity to really say goodbye to my mom and tell her how much seeing her that day meant to me. However, I will always be indebted to her for the lifelong lessons she taught me and others around her. I realize how she wouldn't allow her condition, all the naysayers, and all the negativity around her to define her. Mom always believed in the say, saying that someone's perception of you does not have to become your reality. Her legacy is defined through an unselfish commitment to help others to make an impact through a basic principle where your actions should always speak louder than words. My mom didn't speak in acronyms or business jargon. She was just mom. She was just herself. I can still hear mom say, never underestimate the power and influence you have on others and the potential impact you have on their lives. So who are your heroes? Who are your role models that you look for inspiration and guidance when times get tough? Well, you don't know? Well, you should look around. Look closely because they may be seated across from you right now. Hopefully someone will be led to a real hero or reacquainted with a long lost memory like I did. Or who knows, maybe some of those memories are just waiting to be shared or are tucked away somewhere far away in an old cardboard box. 
somewhere in your basement. Happy holidays, everybody. Please make an impact. Thanks for listening to Ruin a Bad Guy's Day radio podcast with Skip Myers. If you liked our show, please tell your friends and colleagues. You can learn more about us at ruinabadguysday.com or visit us on Twitter and Facebook at Ruin a Bad Guy's Day. Join us for another episode of Ruin a Bad Guy's Day radio podcast. The information provided in Ruin a Bad Guy's Day radio podcast is for informational purposes only. It should not be considered legal or financial advice. You should consult with legal counsel or other professionals to determine what may be best for your individual or organizational needs.